Hey there, greetings everyone. Daniel Lowry here from Anti-Siphon Training, and today we are finishing up our virtualization series with a little bit of fun. We're going to take a look at emulating or virtualizing Android. Aha, should be fun. You might have noticed that I have a little bit of a deeper voice than normal. <laughs> My allergies are having a good time with me today, but I will not let it stop me, no, from bringing you this content because, hey, it's actually a little bit new to me as well. I thought this will be a really fun way to kind of end this series. So let's jump in and see what's going on. I've already gone to Google and I searched for Android Studio Download. This is what you're going to need to be able to perform this action. So you hit the link, Android Studio Download. You can tell I've already actually done this, right? That's why that's how we do videos, right? You have to be able to show them step by step. That's what I'm here to do for you today. And you have this, it says the official IDE for Android app development. And of course, that's Normally what this is for, you are maybe an app builder and you just want to test your app in an environment. Well, it emulates the environment for you. I've heard virtualization. I've heard emu emulation. I'm not sure which one's right. I think here they use emulation, but it does allow you to kind of play around with an, uh, an emulated phone or tablet that's running Android. I thought it was super cool. And it kind of fits into the theme of this whole series, right? And you can see a screenshot of that right there. So that's in Studio Cloud, which I think is a new feature. And then it shows you the core components, which is Compose and Design Tools. You can play around with this. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to get into that, I totally uh, looked. I had to look up what APK stands for. I couldn't remember what it was. I knew it was Android Packet something or Package something. And then it's Kit, Android Package Kit. Those APKs are the files that make up an application that runs in Android. Usually developed in Java or Kotlin, if I'm not mistaken. I think I'm spelling and saying that correctly. But here we go. What we need to do is kind of scroll through here and find, yes, we want to install Android Studio. Maybe that's where we should go. And it shows you, it says, hey, you got to download the latest version of Android Studio. So this seems to be the documentation, which I think if we go back, let's go back. There we go. Oh, well, back too far. Or I'll just, there we go. And now we'll scroll down. And there we are. There's the uh, the downloads. So you got to pick your platform. Blow this up a little bit. So if you're running on Windows, and, and the cool thing is, is I'm running on Linux, but the installer, I've run it on Windows. It I think it looks identical. I couldn't tell really any difference. So it doesn't matter whether you're running this. The, the bouncing ball should be uh, the same for both. I've not installed it on Mac though. So if you're running Mac, you might be on your own, but I'm running Linux. So I need that there. So I grab that tar file, which I have already done. It's actually a, a gzip tar file. And you can see I have LS Android Studio right there. Bada bing, bada boom. I've got it. Cools. Now, what do we do? Step one, untar the file. If you, if this was a zip file for Windows, which no, it's just an exe there is a windows zip so if you got the zip, the zip you have to unzip it which that's a fairly straightforward process in windows but for here we got to untar it and i will do tar dash zxvf because it is a gzipped tar file so then give it the name which is android studio rock and roll let the magic happen come on magic Lots of magic, apparently. Many, many magical things are happening under the hood. There's a lot of stuff inside there. There we go. And that should give us an Android Studio folder, right? You can see there's a bunch of stuff inside of it. I make a, every time I, I in Linux, when I have a Linux system, I always make a tools folder at my home directory. So I'm going to move this folder to that folder because that's where I like to keep stuff that I'm working on. So I'm going to, I'll just copy it. I'll move it. What the heck? Move MV uh, Android Studio to my home folder of tools. But you can put it anywhere you like. You can leave it here. It's totally fine. I'm just moving it for ease of use for me. I'm going to go to CD tools. And then I think it's Android Studio. There we go. All right. So now I'm in the right folder. I've got all the right files. The next thing to do is actually run the installer, which is actually really easy. And I'm, I was I was a little worried about this as I was kind of playing around with it. I was like, this, this looks like it's going to be a lot. Uh, you know, not that I've never installed 
<laughs> software in Linux before, but sometimes it can be a bit of a bear. This did not end up being that. Let me show you what he had to do. All right, so inside of here, there is this bin file or this bin folder. That's where you want to go. So CD into bin, not slash bin. You have your own bin in your Linux system. But here, if you're running Windows, you just got an installer and you install. But for here, in this bin folder, we have all sorts of fun stuff. And one of them is called Studio. That is what you want to run. It's already, if you do ls-l of Studio, you can see it is already an executable file, right? Executable. 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 So everybody, you, you just want to execute this. So dot slash studio. Of course, I spelled it wrong. And fire it off. And that begins. Hey, we have the installer. I'm just going to shrink the terminal down so we have the installer kind of in our face. Now, this is a help us improve Android Studio thing. So you can either send usage statistics to Google if you want to. I'm just going to hit don't send for right now because this is a demonstration. And it's saying, hey, no Android SDK found. Hey, you're right. So I'm going to hit that next button with all the fanfare that it has in front of it. And then it's telling you, hey, these are the things. This is the area that you want to install in, right? So where's the location? If you want to change that, feel free. I don't typically advise it unless you know exactly what you're doing. Just defaults are our friends in some instances. And this is one of those. Tells us the download size and the available disk space that we have. So I'm good to rock and roll. So make sure all that stuff is good for you. If it is, of course, hit next. And it's saying, hey, this is basically what you've asked me to do. Is this cool for you? I say yes. I like it. I'm going with it. Next. Now this is all the uh, terms and conditions and the licenses that you'll need to agree to. And, of course, it is defaulted to decline, so you'll have to click Accept. And then the Finish button lights right up, and you can click that. And, of course, looking at a blue line traveling across your screen is never any fun. It's not for me anyway, so I like to hit that Show Details button. And that could come in handy if anything goes wrong. I can kind of maybe look and see where that went off the rails, get an idea of what the problem is. But I was successful. No issues at all. It says that it. Android SDK is up to date, and I can just click the finish button. And that brings us here, and it's it's grabbing from the uh, test stuff that I've done in the in the past, getting ready for this video for you, good folks, right? So it's it's seeing that I have a couple of projects, but you probably see no projects. If you do, you just hit new project. This is easy game, right? This is not a difficult game. You do have the ability to customize, and there are plugins and some learning that you may want to mess around with if you really find this to be interesting and something that's going to be useful for you. But I'm just going to hit that new project, right? And then you have these different types of templates for the projects, right? And you can see this is for phones and tablets. I can go to Wear OS. So if you have watches or something to that effect, maybe you're running on a, the, your application on a television that's running Android right? Uh, there's also automotive stuff. So there's a lot of power within the Android SDK that you could play with and learn about and maybe find a passion for. But for our intents and purposes, I'm going with phone and tablet, and I'm just going to go with no activity, just a, a really simple, because I just want to show you the emulation part. So I'm going to click that and then click next. Here we give it a name. I'll just call this like my app three, because I've got a few of them already. It tells you where you want to save it. And then the package name, all the details, right? The minimum SDK that's that's happening there, which mine is uh, defaulting to API 24, which is Nougat. But you can change that. You can go, you know what? I want to go way back. I want to hit the time machine. I'm going to go to KitKat. And it does tell you, hey, your app will run on approximately 100% of devices. So there is a plus. And moving backwards, it does have build configuration language. It does say Kotlin. Um, but you can change that to Groovy DSL. I, I don't know anything about this, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to go with those defaults. I do know about the minimum SDK, though. So I'm going to click Finish, and here we are. Okay, so at this point, you should have the Android Studio up and running, hopefully, fingers crossed. If not, you're going to have to you're going to have to start doing some. Uh, things. I will say there was one thing that I did have to change. And let me show you that now. I think this is a good spot for that. 
you can see, well, you might not be able to see it. Let me go full screen here that this is uh, setting up run configurations and things like that. There might be some time that it takes for things to happen. You'll see that progress down here at the bottom. But one of the things that I had to do was go into a terminal and I'll just open uh, a new terminal. Can I just do that? No, it just wants me to open it. Okay, fine, fine. And I'll right click and split this. And we'll make that a little bit bigger. And what I had to end up doing, ooh, that's not what I'm trying to do. Hello. There, ooh, it's, it's a very fine line for my, it's like not giving, there it is, thank you. What, it's, what it had me do is there was a file that was giving me a permissions error, and that file was ls slash dev, dev slash kvm, right? That file right there. In my system, this file was like, hey, you don't have permissions to this file. You need permissions to this file to do anything that you're trying to do. For me, what I had to do was chmod whatever my current user is that I'm running the studio in, okay? So... For me, it was DeLowry, DeLowry, like that. Not CHMod, I'm sorry, CHOwn. I had to change ownership, not just modify the, because the, I tried that at first. I was like, I have permissions. Permissions are there. I'm in the right groups, and it just wasn't working. So I just changed the ownership of DevKVM to my current user, and then it ran like a charm. So this is something you might have to do. So it's CHOwn. Give it your username, colon username. That gives you the your user and your user's group. And it changes the ownership of slash dev KVM. That's what I had to do. I'm not saying that you would have to do that. If you're in Windows, obviously that's not going to be a problem because that's not how Windows works. But for my Linux system, which is Linux Mint 21, I think it is, this was something I had to do. So let me just throw that out there in case this is a problem for you as well. Once I fired that off, everything was fine. I'm just going to control C and exit and go back to here. Then no more permissions error. Okay, finally, we are there. We are ready to rock and roll, which is let's make an emulated device. Let's, let's fire that up. How do we do that? We do that by clicking this like main menu item. It looks like a giant hamburger or something. And then run over to tools. And then hit that device manager option right there. Once that comes up, you'll have this show up and you'll see a little plus sign right around this region. Click that plus sign and create virtual device. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Oh, look at all the available options. It's mostly all Google, right? You see a bunch of pixels. It's all pixels. And then you have this like small phone, medium phone, and resizable experimental phone, but everything else is a pixel. So pick a pixel. I'll go with, I don't know, pixel for XL because that's where my mouse landed. And I will click next right there. You can give it a name, which pixel for XL works fine for me. It shows you some of the dimensions of this. And this is all cool, but I would definitely run over to this additional settings area. And this is where it gets like old hat when it comes to virtualization. We have a device skin, which that's uh, fine with me. I don't care about changing that. We have the front, which is emulated. You can change that to webcam. I, I'm going to stick with emulated. The rear virtual scene, again, stick with the defaults on here. But I do have network. I don't think I've gotten that to work correctly. I think it's crashed on me a few times. So I might have some work to do on there. But let's see here. Startup mode and orientation. But this is really where it starts to get like, oh, I know what's going on here because we have storage, internal storage of two gigabytes. If I want to change that, I can. Do I want to expand storage? Like, is there an SD card that's built into it? Do I want that in there? Cool. I can put that in there and I can change that size. And you get megabytes, kilobytes, so on and so forth. You can make it the size you like. Then you got emulated performance. And I can say, how many CPU cores would I like? Here I've got four, but I can change it to whatever I like. As long as I have those cores, obviously. Uh, graphics acceleration, I'm leaving that on automatic. How much RAM do I think it should have? You know what? Two gigs? Nah, I'm going four gigs, dog. Because why not? VM heap size. And if you don't know what's going on here, there's this whole hover to discover thing. And this is the amount of RAM available to the Java virtual machine. Uh, oh, I guess you got to keep hovering. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Hover over. 
and it's disappeared forever. I love it. It's a fun game. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, it, it's basically giving you uh, the the heap size of the RAM, right? So I can change this. I go, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to 2 gigs. I'm going to change that to 2 gigs because I like giving all sorts of RAM. RAM, VM, heap size, whatever. Give it stuff. And then behind my head. Oh, no, it's not. It's right there. You can see that. It says finish. Click that. Yes, I do want to download this Google API Intel X8664 Atom system. Go for it. And obviously, this is going to take a hot minute, uh, depending on your network speed, because it is downloading this to your system. But once it has this in place, which actually, for me, it doesn't take any, very long. I can see that we're, this is downloading is almost done, right? We're at 83, 85, 90, 90, so on and so forth. Cool. Checking existing file. It's unzipping. So it's just following the bouncing ball. Things are getting done. Shouldn't, like I said, shouldn't take too long for you. It's it's a blue line. Unfortunately, it does not give me the ability to show you what's going on. But it is complete. And that's what you see when it's complete. Hey, it, it did the thing. And then you hit the old finish button. Fini. Cool. And now you should have this thing where it says Pixel 4XL over here. And there's a little play button right there next to it. Click the play button and it'll take a second. It says connecting to the emulator. I'm going to go full screen for you. So I get my head out the way and wait for it. Sneaking allergies. That voice. It's fun, isn't it? Very low, very smooth. Oh, look, a Google emulator or at least a Google pixel 4 XL emulator. This is what's happening here. I'm just going to kind of move this around and I'm just waiting for it to boot up. Hopefully it doesn't take too much longer, but it is doing something. There it goes. And look, hey, look at that. A Google phone. Neat. Fun. It is a little small on this screen. I, I have resolution what it is because, you know, for demonstration purposes. But if you don't like that, there is a little area right there. It says zoom in. And then you can zoom in. And it looks like a phone. Like you can, you can do a phone stuff. And of course, if you were building an application, you could upload the app. You can play around with it. There are some buttons up here to help. Like if you want to turn it off or work with the volume, change the orientation. So if I wanted to switch the orientation, I could. Bada bing. If I want to do the back button, I can do that. I've got the home button. I've got the overview button. I've got UI shortcuts, camera, snapshots, record the screen, taking snapshots. So hardware input, lots of fun stuff here. Just like you had a little Google Pixel phone in your hand, but now it's emulated on your desktop. You might be able to play around with that. And I just thought it'd be, a, like I said, fun. I am nowhere near have have I mastered this at all. But I was like, I wonder if you can. And I, apparently you can. There it is. We saw it. And it should be a lot of fun to learn. So a little homework, not just for you, but for myself as well. To get a little more checked out on this. Maybe build a Hello World app kind of thing. And start really dipping my toe into the mobile side of stuff. And then how can I leverage this to learn more about security and just Android in general on how that works, what's going on underneath the hood. And I can virtualize it. I don't have to actually go out and buy a phone to play around with that. Not that that's not a bad idea. It absolutely is. But hey, another resource for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I sure did. I always have a lot of fun playing around with technology and being able to demo it for you. That said, we are at the end of the virtualization series, but fear not. We'll have more series on the horizons at the Anti-Siphon YouTube channel. So be sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to make sure that you are on top of all those things as they come out, right? And then join us in Discord. Hit us up on LinkedIn. We are very active in the social communities, so please join us. We have Tuesdays where we do a student AMA. You can jump right in, ask questions. I'll be there. Others will be there. Pen testers, security professionals, and other people that, that are trying to just learn more about it. It's a really fun community. You should kind of definitely drop by. We also do our anti-cast on Wednesdays. A lot of fun. So go to the antisiphontraining.com websites and see what we have on the horizons. Get you a login and have a lot of fun. Join us. We look forward to seeing you. Until next time, have a great day.